Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people, so my sister sent me some information on this yesterday, and it deals with the brother by the name of Lakeith Smith. I had heard about it, but I thought that there was just enough information out there and enough coverage to where I didn't have to, you know, jump in and create anything on it as well. But they are uh, calling all content creators, you know, anybody that makes their own intellectual property, you know, writers, vloggers, bloggers, whoever. They're calling for you to try to cover this. So if you could fit this into your works, if not, you know, get this out to your people. You can get this video out right here or any other one that you may come across. OK. And also, in addition to covering Lakeith Smith, this is also going to be a Racism for Dummies 101 presentation. So if you're somebody who boasts that racism is over because you didn't pick cotton or your fam you never owned a slave or somebody who just says, you know, that Obama is president, was president. So there's no racism or, you know, Jackie Robinson got a chance, things like that. You too, just uh, sit your big ignorant face back. Listen, no need for you to comment, though. OK, so first, let me introduce you to. This thing here by the name of Sibley Reynolds, okay? This is an Alabama hillbilly who made it to the highest levels of being a judge in the state of Alabama. A true roach in a robe, okay? Judge Sibley Reynolds is the name, okay? Now, Judge Sibley Reynolds had two cases in one day. One case was with this guy named Wesley Phelps, 28 years of age. Let's talk a little bit about Wesley Phelps. Wesley Phelps, 28-year-old white man, uh, has prior convictions for sexual assault on a minor. He had been arrested in the past for burglary and grand theft auto. I mean, grand theft and theft or whatever. So, a little bit more about his story. One day, Wesley Phelps, Wesley Phelps, I was about to say, Wesley Phelps, he was high on drugs. He stole a car. He led the police on a high speed chase. He crashed the car. The car caught on fire. His girlfriend, who was in the car with him, she passed away and died, okay? She passed away and died. When he had to face the music for this crime of stealing the car, crashing the car, his girlfriend dying in the car, we have a career-long thuggy right here. Uh, this judge, Sibley Reynolds, sentenced him to three years in prison. Now, on the same day, this judge had to see Lakeith Smith, okay? Now, a little background on Lakeith Smith, 15-year-old. At the time, OK, 15 years old. So in February of 2015, Lakeith and a group of his friends, they broke into two unoccupied homes in Millbrook, Alabama. The cops show up. Lakeith and his friends are still there at the house. When the cops show up, one of the police officers, boom, shot one of his friends by the name of Deontay Washington. OK, no, Adante Washington, not Deontay, Adante Washington shot Adante Washington. OK, so Adante is gone now and now Lakeith has to face the music for his transgressions. Now, they decided that Lakeith will be charged as an adult. This crime was uh, committed when he was 15 years old. Now, eventually, outcome, Lakeith was convicted of theft, burglary, burglary and felony murder. The biggest problem here is the felony murder. Basically, what felony murder means is that. Lakeith is being charged for the death of his friend. The courts say that felony murder is a rule that allows a defendant to be charged with first, first degree murder for a killing that occurs during a dangerous felony, even if the defendant is not the killer. So although the police killed his friend Adante, being that they were committing what they call a dangerous felony, Lakeith is going to be charged with that murder. A dangerous felony, felony can be considered burglary, rape, arson, or kidnapping, okay? Now, they said that the rationale behind felony murder is that certain crimes are so dangerous that society wants to de deter people 
from engaging in these crimes, okay? So that's what's going on. Lakeith is being charged for the death of his friend, although he did not kill his friend. The police officer shot him in the process of a crime, okay? Now, in Lakeith's case, the prosecutor, right, has discretion as to whether or not they want to charge somebody with felony murder, okay? The prosecutor. Now, in this case, in this situation, the prosecutor was this thing here by the name of C.J. Robinson, okay? C.J. Robinson, he felt as though this was okay. Now, one thing that could have saved or changed the dynamic of this was something called the red line rule, okay? I don't know how often they use this red line rule in the state of Alabama. I'm pretty sure they pull it out and use it for people from the white community when they want to. Now, a little bit more about the red line rule. The red line rule is an exception to felony murder. What it does is it provides that felons are not liable for the deaths of any co-felons that occur during the commission of a crime. So long as the death is caused by the victim or a police officer attempting to prevent escape or further criminal activity. Clearly, Lakeith and his friends fall into this. So the red line rule is what can get people out of this. This was created. And why Lakeith, at 15 years old, wouldn't be somebody that would, you know, fall under the umbrella to be, you know, for this rule to help him out? Of course we know. You know, we know this prosecutor right here didn't choose to bring this red line rule in for 15-year-old Lakeith because uh, I just suspect that he's somebody from uh, Alabama who hates black people. He's been doing it since, you know, all his life. So, people, th these are white supremacists here. I mean, Alabama, whatever. I don't care if it was New York, whatever. They sit around and they make laws and rules, but they always come up with these clauses in gray areas where, you know, they can use their white supremacist discretion. That's what they do. So they make a law, and then they have something like this, the red line rule, so that they can use their white supremacist discretion. And they do this to save their own people and give them a break. Whenever you hear that word discretion, that's just racism. That's why they do these things. Whenever you hear these clauses and things like that, that's just racism. That's just something that they put in these laws where, okay, we got to create something that isn't so blatant that we can use with our own discretion to get our own people out of these situations. So just straight racism, people. So, uh, and we also know that this thing called felony murder that Lakeith was charged with was made for black folks. So Lakeith got hit over the head 55 years. They gave Lakeith 55 years. 55 years. Y'all 15 years old, 55 years in prison. Now, after he got this 55 years, people were vocal about it. People protested. They wrote. This was called out. They said, this is not right. You're going to give somebody 55 years, 15 years old. And the court said, OK, well, we got to do something about this. We'll do something better. So I think just last week, the court said, OK, it's no longer 55 years. It's 30 years. So now he has 30 years. Still unfair. I mean, this is totally sick. It makes absolutely no sense. Uh, I don't it, it makes no sense. 30 years for this. 30 years felony murder, first felony murder makes no sense, number one. And then they have a clause which can get people out of this situation. I mean, people, if you want to sign a petition to help bring justice to this right here, they want people to go on uh, and sign a petition. I will pin the petition, the link to the petition in the comments. But, you know, there you go. You know, they're trying to get justice for Lakeith Smith, another unfortunate situation. A uh, young man made a bad decision at the age of 15. Yeah, he cre he didn't he he committed a transgression. But nah, this is absolutely wrong right here to give somebody 30 years at the age of 15 for this. And there you go, justice for Lakeith Smith. Hopefully, and this is also a racism 101 for dummies who fall into that category as well. So people, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this. Hopefully, they can do something about this. In addition to people, this guy right here who we're comparing this to, this guy, Wesley Phelps. I do believe that his last name, Phelps, in addition to his skin being white, I do believe that Phelps have something to do with it as well and also why he can run in and out of the courts as a thug committing all these crimes and he has yet to really have to sit behind bars for some real, real time for what he did. But anyway, yeah, that's what I believe. But get in the comments, people. Let me know what you think. Easy.